344 times per day. That's how many times you check your phone. That's once every two and a half minutes. How many hours would you say a day you're on a device? Oh. Pretty much all day. Yeah. On yeah. I have the device with me all at, most of the time when I'm awake. Nomophobia, a fear of being without a mobile phone. We've all been there. You have a free second or two, so your first instinct is to just check your phone because you have to be doing something. The smartphone is the ultimate invention. We were given tools beyond what our ancient brains could comprehend and that companies could take advantage of. So what do we do about it? How do we break our smartphone addiction? To start, we have to understand that phones are inherently addictive. We should approach smartphones in the same way that we approach smoking and drinking. We know it's bad for us and we have to learn to limit it or to not do it at all. Because we know that the apps on these phones are made and designed to be as addictive as possible. The algorithms that they've incorporated function on the, the most powerful way to keep people doing a behavior, or an animal for that matter, is intermittent random reward. Intermittent random reward, also known as intermittent reinforcement, is the delivery of a reward at irregular intervals, a method that has been determined to yield the greatest effort from the subject. The subject does not receive a reward each time they perform a desired behavior or according to any regular schedule, but at seemingly random intervals. This sounds familiar if you've ever engaged with a smartphone. So intermittent reinforcement, it's effectively what these phones are built on. Some of them are built intentionally with them installed. Facebook will sometimes send you notifications. Instagram will sometimes send you notifications. It's not all the time and it's not every single time you pick up your phone, but sometimes when you pick up your phone, there's something there for you. There's something there that interests you, that intrigues you. And this is a powerful tool and companies take advantage of it. This was a remarkable tool thousands of years ago when food and water weren't as readily available as they are now. Back then, if you got intermittent reinforcement and it was, I'm gonna go out in the wild, hunt and kill a deer, and then I get food, that's the intermittent reward. You don't always get to hunt and kill a deer, but you know you have to keep going out in order to be able to hunt and kill that deer. That's not how it is anymore. We don't have to hunt and kill deer. And so phones implement these thousand year old technologies that are installed into our brain on these phones and they completely manipulate us. Every single one of us has gotten manipulated by it at some point. And truly, it's kind of terrifying. Over the past few years, this has been something that I've really concerned myself with. I think that people using their phones too much is one of the biggest problems that we currently face in our society today, not to make it too dramatic, but I do think that throughout the last couple years, I've learned several things that I can show you and hopefully help you use your phone a little bit less. And the first one is finding hobbies. But what is a hobby? A hobby is defined as an activity done regularly in one's leisure time for pleasure. But it should be more fulfilling than just something done strictly for pleasure. It should also grow you as a person. It should challenge you. And it should ideally make you into a better person. Drinking alcohol can be pleasurable for you. But that's not a hobby. That is a waste of time. I understand that sometimes you just need to turn your brain off, but I think that a lot of people do that too many times. And the question starts to become, are you ever going to let your brain just be on? Because I know I've personally felt like that. So you have to find hobbies that are productive and also enjoyable for you. One of them for me is running. I really like running. It's really good for me. And I also really enjoy it. Another one is creating videos. I love creating videos. I love the whole process. It takes forever. <laughs> for every minute of footage you see, it takes me about an hour to accumulate that. And the final thing that I've been doing is Sudoku and I will turn on some like Mozart or Beethoven and just listen to that music while doing Sudoku. It's been really enjoyable for me to do that. It can kill an hour before bed. I'm not looking at a screen. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm just looking at the puzzles and it's something that I can really enjoy doing. It helps me think. It actually makes me think, but I can still be very relaxed while doing it but just not so relaxed that my brain's turned off. I'm not just staring at a screen, watching a movie. I'm actually challenging myself. And another tip that I use is to separate myself from my phone and to put distance between me and my phone. Something as simple as putting your phone in a different room can make all the difference in whether or not you use it. How many times in a day do you just pick up your phone because it's close to you and you have nothing better to do? If you start putting distance between you and your phone, you will start using your phone a lot less. And finally, the third thing is to delete the social media apps. You got to get all of them off your phone. Delete them, delete the account, just get rid of them. 
you are not missing anything. I haven't had a social media app on my phone for almost three years now, and I can promise you, you'll be a lot happier. I know I am. <laughs> Without those on my phone, I feel significantly happier. It's not that every single day I'm waking up smiling and this is the greatest day of my life. I just don't get hit by the freight train of negativity and sadness and despair and anger that you find on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you use TikTok, just delete them. Get rid of all of them. Even this one that you're watching this on now. I think that this is the best one, which is why this is the only one that I make videos for and produce content for anymore because I believe that this is the best type of platform because it's long form, it's content where you can you can fully flesh out ideas and I think you just need to make sure that you really, you really curb your usage of all of these smartphone apps because they will take control of your life and you won't even know it. You'll look back and you'll think, what have I done the last five years? Trust me, I have felt like that. That's why I could speak so strongly about this topic. So where does that leave us as a society? Where are we at? Where does this put us at? Well, it puts us in kind of a bad place. I mean, to be completely honest with you, it, we're not in a great place as a society. And it's not that we don't have the tools to be in the best place ever. It's just that we have been given a tool with the internet and the smartphone that is, and I've said this a bunch, that's equivalent to the printing press, fire, and the wheel added together times 10. That's how impactful the internet has been. The only difference between all those three things and the internet is that there were no real bad negative consequences that came along with any of those things. The internet, there have been some negative consequences. These are inventions that you look back on and you think those are the great inventions of humanity. This is, this is what shaped humanity. And I think we really need to concern ourselves with what our children are interacting with on these phones. Should our children even have phones? And how should we be interacting with these phones? Because I have done it where I quit the smartphone and I got rid of it. And yeah, it's better in a lot of cases, but then in a lot of other cases, it's, it's not an improvement. The smartphone actually does improve your life pretty dramatically. So you have to be aware that it is a good thing. I can talk negatively about it all I want, but it's the ultimate invention. It's the best one. It's the best, it's, it's number one. So we have to be able to accept the fact that it's not a perfect device and it's flawed. But the reason it's flawed is because of us. We the consumer, we the user, we the people. We are the reason that the smartphone has become such a bad thing. The country you might live in, for my country, for any country, generally speaking, smartphones add a lot to your life, but it can also pull a lot away from it. So what I would suggest is following all of these tips, leaving some suggestions down below what you think we should do, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. And in the meantime, use your phone less, turn on screen time, see how much you're using it, and cut that number in half and come back to this video and you can thank me. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to the comments. And I just wanna thank you for watching and giving me a chance on this channel. I'll see you in the next one.